Hi, everybody. Sandy Kreisberg here. It's Friday with Sandy. Our beloved leader, John, is out uh, correcting a haircut that he was unhappy with. So we're just alone here with our candidate, Rodrigo. Hello, Rodrigo. How are you? Hi, Sandy. Fine. Thank you. You? Good. Uh, Rodrigo, why don't you introduce yourself? Just tell us where I'll I'll walk you through this. Tell us where you're working now. Yeah, uh, um, I currently work at Scotia Bank. It is one of the top five commercial banks in Mexico. Good. And how long have you been there? I've been here a little over a year. Good. And do, do people from your bank and your job as associate director of strategic projects? Do they apply to business school? Yeah, they do. Uh, so I work within the strategy and transformation department and we're like the internal consulting branch of the bank and a lot of people apply to business school. Like wh wh where do they uh, typically get in? Uh, I've seen people accepted to Booth, to MIT. That's, yeah, two people to Booth. And and you mentioned that a woman in your... Um, department got admitted to MIT and she was pretty similar to you in yeah. that she had the same title uh, except there's she she had a higher GPA right yeah yeah she yeah okay let, let's address this your your, your GPA is 3.2 this is from uh, I, 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 ITAM the leading one of the leading universities in Mexico and uh, I told you that the GPA is really important. And if you could find out your class standing, it would help. You, you, you're unaware of that, right? Yeah, at the moment I am. Okay. You either have to find, if your class standing is, you know, in the top, uh, you know, 10% or 15%, that's fine. If it's, if it's lower than that or if it's really low, you have to write a special essay. This is critical for you. Okay. A lot of schools give you a, uh, a little space. They say, what else do you want us to know? Okay. Okay. I, I say this every week. The, way, the, the, the theme of that essay is my GPA is not a good predictor of how I will perform at your business school. Do you understand that? Yeah, I do. Tell me why. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I can talk from my personal experience. When I went to university, I first I got involved in a lot of uh, student organizations. Did it go and, up or did your GPA go up? Yeah, I mean, the, the first year it was quite bad, but I then I I got into it, it got better, but then I started working and it got worse. So, I mean- oh, That was almost, yeah. that was almost good news. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, just say you've, you've learned how to, my GPA was a time management problem. My first okay. year, are you the first generation of your family to go to college? Uh, no, not to college. All right, you just say I had a little trouble finding my way and then I, I uh, my GPA actually went up in years two and three. It was this or whatever. Yeah. And then yeah. When I started working, I had a hard time managing the job and the GPA. Okay. Okay. And when I go to your beloved business school, I, I'm, I'm more focused. I'm a better time manager. And I don't believe uh, the three, two predicts my performance at your school. Okay. That's critical stuff, and be prepared to be examined, cross-examined on that at, at an interview. All right. Uh, okay, so Scotia Bank, and then you work for uh, EY Parthenon for two and a half years. Yeah. Uh, good. And then, uh, do, do people from there apply to business school? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, currently there's also a girl I know at MIT and uh, three more people at LBS. 
Yeah. Okay. Just between us guys here, let me give you a hint. Uh, females are known as women. Okay. <laughs> okay. You may be interviewed by a woman, and she would not be interested in you referring to your classmate as a girl. Okay. Dude, I'm not kidding. It's good to you and everyone else. No girl. Okay. Understood. Thank you. Give me a roadmap of what, what you want to do after uh, business school. Okay. Uh, when you graduate, what would you want to do and what would you want to do after that? Okay. Um, when I graduate, I'd like to join uh, a consulting firm to help companies in the adoption of state-of-the-art technology. And I'd like to first work in a developed country as um, the adoption of generative AI will happen first there and it is uh, the next big way of, of tech. And I'd like to gather- Okay, the here's the way to say that. Okay. We, we, when you work for a consulting company, you, you, particularly the big ones, you know, they, they, they throw you wherever they need you, okay? And sometimes they have a rotational program. So investigate that. You should be able to give a very fluent answer. When, when I graduate, like a, a great job for me would be the rotational leadership program at McKinsey. That would give me an exposure to blah, blah, and blah. Okay. Or BCG has a program uh, f for people interested in uh, AI. Uh, I'm making this up. But do your yeah, homework. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And have a complete, quick answer there. Okay. Good. What would you like to do after that? I, I mean, actually, on the long term, I'd like to become a partner on a digital practice of any consulting firm and help companies in Mexico adopt technology because, I mean, Mexico is lagging. Such companies yeah. exist. Is, is there a, are there a, a, a dedicated consulting companies in Mexico dedicated to AI and digital practice? Yeah. I mean, McKinsey has a digital practice here in Mexico. A, a couple of friends work there, and they are the first uh, firm that offer Gen AI solutions <laughs> here in Mexico. But it is really early stage still. Why don't you Why don't you start working there after business school? Because Gen AI adoption is meant to happen before in developed countries, as co company costs are higher, and they will be lo looking to cut them off. And I'd like to have some international experience and gain the experience and toolkit to come back to Mexico and do, do that thing here. Okay, that's a good answer. Okay. And um, here's, here's a very important question that I ask every week and nobody's able to answer. Who's a role model? Could you name a role model? So someone who, like, well, well you know, here's a question. Whose job do you want in, uh, at 25 years, at the height of your career? Name someone whose job you want. Uh, I mean, I'd like to have the job of Neil Hornsby. I don't know if you know the company PFF, Pro Football Focus. It, it, it gathers three things I'm interested in, data, technology, and sports. They provide, uh, they started out providing ratings for NFL players, but they have expanded to create KPIs and data available via, via subscription to anybody interested in in the sport and, you know, they have different tools and they have incorporated technology to their offerings. And I think it's really interesting. And I, I think that's a really cool job. Good. Uh, is he the, um, the leader of that firm or is he just a player in uh, that practice? Uh, he was the founder, he was the CEO and he recently retired. All right, that's a very good answer. Okay, just just bone up on him. You know, I, I missed his name, but you go someone who's someone whose job I want is this guy, and what he does right now is he's the blah at blah where he does one and two. Okay, and he's a business school graduate, and the way he got there was going this and that. So he's a good role role model and roadmap for me. Okay. And does it matter if he's not a business school graduate? Yeah, um, it, it, no, it doesn't matter. You go, he didn't go to business school. Uh, 
but uh, I, I, he was able to go to start working at here and then work his way up through there. So that's okay. a good roadmap for me. But I want to go to business school because I want to have international exposure. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm going to ask you this question because it, it will come up on an interview. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you want your classmates to know about Mexico? Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, I, I've actually traveled quite a bit internationally. I visited multiple countries and know people from everywhere in the world. And the impression they have of Mexico is that it's a very unsafe place and that there's a lot of violence here. Uh, and that is true. Uh, but nah, you're, also, you're too deep into it. What I want them to know is that Mexico is a developing country. Is that accurate? Yeah. Mexico is a developing country. I, I would hope they know where it's located. It's uh, south of the United States. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> its current form of government is what? It's a democracy. We have a president. Is it, it, it's, a, it's a democracy, it's south of the United States. What, what are some of its leading industries? Some of the leading, uh, tourism is very important and manufacturing. Actually, the near sharing opportunity due to the conflicts with China is really big in Mexico right now. I don't okay, know. that's important. What, what did you just say about China? Uh, so, there are certain difficulties in the relations between the U.S. and China, and this, this translates into exports and imports, and Mexico is a good place to come and manufacture an export to the U.S., so it's a good opportunity right now. Yeah, a lot of people are setting up manufacturing plants in Mexico and then um, in, importing that to the U.S. as a way of getting around uh, you, uh, ch wait a minute, Chinese firms are setting up in Mexico, right? Uh, not only Chinese, and probably friends from all over the world. It, 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 it is just a hub to, to export to the U.S. It has cheap labor. There are good engineers here. Manufacturing capac cap capabilities are, are good. We have nice roads. So, yeah. Yeah, so one, one of the attractions of Mexico is that we're a good place to set up manufacturing. We've got uh, natural resources. We've got uh, enough educated uh, labor. And as, as, a, as, as, as a rule, everything's a little cheaper. Wages yeah. are a little lower. Construction's a little cheaper. So it's a very attractive place to get a foothold in North America. Yeah, it is. Okay. That yeah, would be something you'd want your classmates to know. How hard is it to open a business there? That's another one of the... When, when people... When I ask, what do you want your classmates to know about Mexico? The answer is, where is it? Is it a developed, developing, or undeveloped country? What is the form of government? How hard is it? What are some of its leading exports? How hard, is it, how hard is it to start a business there? Do you okay. need a local partner? What's the answer to that? Uh, it actually is not that hard, but the main problem right now in Mexico in some places is rule of law. You can open a business, but maybe you, you will get bribed for security by criminal groups. Okay, and then places, something so. that uh, Mexico has a reputation for corruption and that yeah. reputation is somewhat true. And yeah. it, it's a real problem. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you, that's what you want. Your, you, you, when they ask you what you want your classmates to know about Mexico, they want the truth. They don't want you to be a, to sell Mexico. Okay. They want the good and the bad. Yeah, there's a lot of good and a lot of bad here. Yeah. That, that's, that's a good way to answer the question. Well, there's good things and bad things. Here, here's the good. Bang, bang, bang. Here's the bad. Bang, bang, bang. And anyone listening to this should be able to do that about their home country. It uh, frequently comes up. Here, here's another frequent question. Tell me about your decision to go to I, I, ITAM. Is that the way? Yeah. ITAM. Yeah. ITAM. Um, 
So back when I was in high school, I was, I, I realized the courses I really enjoyed were mathematics and also social sciences, history, civics, philosophy, and I think economics makes a good merger. Uh, okay, yeah, l l pay attention. There's a formulaic answer to this. And I mean okay. formulaic in a good way. I went to an academically oriented high school. X percent of the kids in my high school went to college. Uh, several co uh, of those colleges, several were frequent flyers. I, I assume all this is accurate, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm not making this up. I mean, I, I'm making it up, but it's true. <laughs> but it's factual, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, so my choices were between A and B. I chose B because I was attracted to this part of their program. I had a friend there. Uh, I had a couple of friends there, and I spoke to them, and they liked it. I, I visited, or, or it was close to my house, whatever. Uh, th those are the reasons you attend a college. You got it? Okay. Yeah. So let's see if you can do it. Okay. Hey, so you went to uh, ETAM. Um, so I, it, it went out to two options. I studied uh, high school at Tech, which is also a university and it had a high school program. And I choose, I had chosen to study economics. I was between Tech and ETAM. I chose ETAM because it had a stronger brand and content on history and philosophy and politics. It, it, it was a bit rougher on the quant side as well, and it was near my house. That also was a big factor. Did you live on campus or live home? No, I, I live home, but I, I walked to campus. It was really, really close. And also the rankings, it figured better the economics program at ETAM that, uh, that than any other. Okay, so there are a number of reasons. There, yeah. the, 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 uh, it, it, there, there basically came down to two. So I went to an academically oriented high school. Uh, uh, every year, X number of kids go to ETAM. How, do you know that number approximately? Like from my high, from my high school? Yeah. Uh, I'd say it was about 20. Yeah, that's important. I mean, yeah. that explains a lot. Yeah. So I, I knew those, I, I knew those kids. I spoke to them. They, they, they enjoyed the program. I, uh, it, the school was very, it was, I lived almost down the block from it. So I was familiar with the campus. Uh, you said you did live, you lived at home. Yeah. With my parents. Yeah. yeah. My, and my plan was to live at home to save money. So it, it checked a lot of boxes. You get it? Okay. Okay. I get it. Why did you join uh, Morgan Stanley? Is that your first job? Yeah, my first full-time job, yeah. Yeah, so tell me about how that came about. Uh, so back when I was in university, I wanted to be an investment banker. Uh, they came into school and gave talks and I was really impressed by, you know, the work style and lifestyle, it was really flashy to me. So I wanted to join. I went to interview for investment banking, but I didn't yeah, get it. And you got they, the job. Yeah, is yeah. staying there one year and five months? Yeah. Is that unusual? But, Usually it's a two-year gig, isn't it? No, but it wasn't in investment banking. I got into the equity research department. So uh -huh. I didn't get the, the investment banking gig, but I got in the equity research gig, and I viewed it as a stepping stone to apply uh, again, to an investment banking job. Okay, good. That's a good explanation. I was yeah. interested in investment banking, but the only uh, the offer f was in their equity research. And I said, you know, I'll take the offer. I'll join the firm. I'll, you know, uh, find my way around. And, and I, I actually did use it as a stepping stone to my next job at... Uh, Parthenon, where I did get to do investment banking. Oh, no. Actually, when I was at Equity Research, I got I realized I got more, inter more interested in strategic analysis. So I wanted to switch to management consulting, and that's why I went to EY Parthenon. Ah, okay. 
yeah, whatever the truth is. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Drum roll, please. Uh, I don't think you're getting into HBS. There's too many guys like you with less to explain, including the GPA. Okay. Uh, I'd say you, what you've got in your favor is uh, they, they may be looking for uh, applicants from Mexico, but I may be wrong about that. Do you, do you know if these schools get a lot of applicants from Mexico or are they say, boy, here's a, we've, here's a chance for us to add a Mexican flag to our flag wall. I mean, the, the only business school in the U.S. that I know that accepts a lot of Mexicans is Booth. Okay. Uh, I, I, I don't think you're getting into Wharton either. It, it, it's just, you've got to blink too many times. Okay. Uh, and the, you, 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 they're going to take some guy like you with a higher GPA. Although there's an outside chance of Wharton because they take a big class. I, I think your chances at NCAD, at NCAD and LBS are solid. Okay. Why, why don't you apply to Booth? Uh, yeah, I, I, I probably should, but I, I'm just compelled by the location and the international cohort that NCAD and the LBS, but I, I will also apply there. Where do you want to work after business school? In um, what what country? Uh, ideally, in the UK. How come? There, there's just I mean, the, the the student visa is friendlier if you if you go to LBS. I really like the culture. I personally yeah. enjoy. Okay, a lot of the, if you if, if, if you're certain you want to work in the UK, LBS is a good choice. Yeah, I mean, but but I do not. Uh, I, I will apply to Booth as well. Yeah. yeah, take a look at it. Um, so are my chances at Booth it's, good? It's a good school. Your chances at Booth are, uh, yeah, they are, yeah, uh, yeah, they're indexed. That you get that whatever their acceptance rate is, that's you. Maybe okay. a little bit better. Um, okay. Uh, you, you've got a good story. You've got to tell your story to bring some of these threads together. Yeah. yeah. What you need is a very strong consistent story. My goal is to be an impactful, we'll, we'll answer this, yeah, we'll, we'll, we did this, but I forgot already. What <laughs> job do you want? You want to you want to be a cons an impactful consultant? Yeah. Yeah, uh, my goal is to be an impactful uh, consultant in, in, in the, uh, you know, possibly in the areas of blah and blah. People, uh, hero, you know, role models for me are this guy, this guy, and this guy. You should be able to have that as a kind of catechism. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Understood. Without, without sounding scripted, you should internalize that. All right. Good. Well, if you can just explain the GPA, you've got an okay chance. You're you got a lot else going for you. Okay. Yeah, I think I can. So thank you. <laughs> Okay, Rodrigo, good talking to you. I'll still Thank love you. Thank you very much.